So today I'm gonna walk through an unboxing of our Performance Online Power Brake Kit we got. I'm also gonna show you guys how we ran our brake lines as well as how we decided to bleed our brakes. Essentially, this video should be from start to finish installing a brake kit from Performance Online. There were several different headaches involved in terms of running brake lines, there usually is. We had a lot of issues with leaking, so every time we would go to bleed the brakes, we'd find another leak somewhere, which would chew up our new painted calipers or would chew up our painted rear end. It's a big old pain in the butt. The Performance Online Power Brake Kit that we got for our 64 C10, I'll pop it up right here. It was $299 roughly, so that was a, a little bit of a chunk of change, but it'll be nice to have you know a new brake system, power brakes. So things that you'll need when you're running your brake lines, generally speaking, you're gonna need a tool that's going to be able to crimp or bend the brake lines for you. Simply grabbing it with your hand trying to bend it is going to ruin your brake lines. I will pop that tool up right here, and I'm going to show you guys how we bled our brakes. If you can get a hold of one of those cool machines that bleeds the system for you, go ahead and do that. But if you're balling on a budget like we are, then this is the way you do it. You got one person inside the cab that's pushing the brake pedal and you got the other person that's bleeding the brakes on each corner. So keep that in mind. Another thing you may really want to consider is really trying to shield your calipers, A-arms, rear end, any play, any, anywhere where it can leak. Anywhere where there can be a leak, try to cover it up because otherwise you're going to start you know, chewing away your brand new paint if you spend all the time, just like we did. If you're able to use the brake lines that were originally on the truck, I would suggest doing that. Otherwise, you need to buy new lines. You know, We went ahead and just replaced everything because we didn't want all of the issues that were going to come along with boogered up old brake lines. One other thing I want to mention is you will have to drill a couple holes into your firewall if you're using this kit specifically. Where the old master cylinder used to sit this new power brake kit will use two of the existing holes, but you've got to drill out two of the holes. I'll also show you that in the video in order to be able to mount the new power brake kit onto the 64 C10. One of the issues we experienced while installing this kit is the push rod for the power brake kit was not the correct length, so we had to do some modifying in order to get that right. Also, the little rubber boot that's supposed to meet the firewall or supposed to go into the firewall was not long enough, but those are some small headaches that you know just kind of come along with the territory. Anyway, let me go ahead and get some footage up for you guys, and uh, hopefully it's helpful. All right.
are running into a couple headaches for whatever reason. Uh, we are not getting any brakes to the rear. We actually just unscrewed um, this back line right here. And we found that we're not getting any fluid running to the back, which means we don't have any brakes in the back. We are going to take one of these off to see if uh, either the proportioning valve is bad or if the master cylinder itself is bad. Isn't that right? So we just bled this one back here, uh, coming from the proportioning valve. We're not we're not getting anything, so we're trying to see if, the, if it's either the master cylinder or the proportioning valve just based off trial and error. So we're about to unscrew this right here from the cylinder itself. We're gonna see um, if we're, or I guess right here rather, either or, but we're gonna see if we're getting anything from the cylinder. Um, I would hope that it's just this, and we'll send it back to uh, Performance Online to get another one, but I'm not sure, we'll see. So, well, something, something's wrong, so. Watch that camera because we got too much okay. going on. Okay. Time to put you away. <laughs> anyway, what we did was we just put an air gun to the proportioning valve, blew it out. It did look like there was something that was stuck in there, but we'll see if that fixes the problem. But he's not happy, so I'm gonna put this away. Is it moving? Push it. Yep, stop. Is that with no pumping or anything? Yeah. So. All right, guys, so that pretty much does it for us today. As you can see, there is a lot going on in terms of how you need to run your brakes. We decided just to run it on the inside of the frame and then to get to the rear end. Uh, I think you guys probably got a pretty good idea of how we ran it right there. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the creative process in terms of how we decided to run our brake lines. You know, we just had to sit there and kind of eyeball it to figure out where we wanted it to go. Something I will mention, you do want to make sure that you do have room to travel for your rear end because you have to keep in mind you've got some moving components that are going to be using those brake lines so if you if you have it too tight it might rip the brake line out the moment you hit a bump in the back that's just one thing that you might want to consider and uh, you, you wouldn't like that very much one exciting thing i want to share with you guys for next week's video is i ordered a new digital gauge kit from intel electronics I'm really excited about it. I got a refurbished one off eBay, and uh, I'll go through all the details with you guys next week once I get it in. Anyway, if you guys like what you see so far, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.